First, here's a quick look at the recipe. Uh, start off with 340 millilitres of water, 500 grams of flour. I tend to mix my flour 75 grams of wholemeal and uh, 425 of white, but you can make it whatever mix you like. Um, you have to have fed your starter probably four or five hours before. Hopefully you can see my Susan is very bubbly and ready to go. And you'll need 70 grams of starter and just 11 grams of salt, that's it. Get a mixing bowl and put your water in first. Bottled water is good or uh, filtered water. Don't use it straight out the tap if you can. Now I'm going to run mine at 380 because I like a little bit more liquid in my bread. 380 on the spot. Now put in Bob or Susan or whatever you call it. Oh, look at that. So we're looking for 70 grams. And I don't know whether you can see in the video, but you'll notice that um, it's floating, which is a really good sign. I fed my starter uh, about four hours ago with 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water, so it's at one to one. Another five grams and we'll be done. Okay, before you mix the other ingredients in, it's a good idea just to stir this around. If the starter stick, it will take you a minute or so to do this. Actually, you could also put the salt in. This is 11 grams of salt because it's a good idea to get it mixed thoroughly in the water. It doesn't hurt to put the salt in early. Now, back on the scales and start adding flour. As I said, I use a mixture, so we're going to start off with 70 grams of stuff. Uh, oh, what am I doing? 75 grams of wholemeal. This is a nice Shipton Mill wholemeal. And then top it up to 500 grams with white. A bit more. And a little bit more. So this is the messiest bit now, literally just with one hand, thoroughly mix it. You don't need to knead it, all you've got to do is incorporate all the water with the flour. Try and 
keep it off the sides as much as possible, which is what I'm not doing. And that's it now. It is just one sticky mess. I'm going to scrape down the sides using my special tool. Once you've got all the measurements in, don't be tempted to add more flour if you think it's too wet or more water if it's, you think it's too stiff. Just leave it at the measurements. With 340 millimetres of water, you're going to have, be having bread with a hydration of 70%, which is about ideal for a whole meal. If you want slightly bigger holes and a better rise, you can take it up to 380 grams, which is a 78% hydration. That's it. Cover it and leave it for two hours. If you've got a shower cap, put that over the top or a damp tea cloth. I happen to have a saucepan lid which fits perfectly over the top. Just set it aside. It doesn't need to be anywhere particularly warm. Just leave it for um, an hour, hour and a half uh, or even up to two hours. This process is called auto leasing and what will happen is the bread will actually start to form gluten and you don't need to knead it. So once it's out of here, you won't be doing any of that sort of hard work. Right, here we are, uh, two hours later. I did the washing and forgot about it. So what we need to do is get it out of the bowl and do something called a stretch and fold. So what I recommend is, uh, first of all, get a water spray. And spray your work surface, your fingers too, uh, because it will take a little bit of getting out of this plastic bowl. Just gently ease it out. Your dough, if you've used 340 millimetres of water, won't be quite as wet as this. It's almost out. Try not to tear it and it into pieces. So got a clean bowl, pretty clean bowl, and a lump of dough. Now the great thing is this is already got a lot of gluten in it. You can't quite window pane it yet but uh, it really has developed a lot of gluten while it's been sitting there. So all we have to do now is create a bit of tension in the dough by doing something called stretch and folds. So imagine you've got eight corners on your lump um, and then just take each corner and fold it into the middle. So I'm on the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th fold now and you can already feel that the dough is getting some strength and resisting your pulls. So you only need to do this twice round, so a maximum of 16. Turn the dough back over into a ball. Just give it a little bit of a shape like this with your hands. If it's a bit sticky, put a bit of water back on your hands. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash the bowl out and put some olive oil in it and then return this to rest for 45 minutes. So here we are back. I've clean the bowl out, a little smear of olive oil and now you'll notice after I did the stretch and folds and I should have mentioned it that I turned the bread over so this was the face, this was the face that was sitting on the work surface and this is the surface that will be the top of the bread when it's made so I'm now going to put it back in exactly like that so this will be the top of the bread when it's made Cover it back up, 45 minutes later come back and we'll have another go. 
Okay, here we go with stretch and fold number two. Uh, the dough's been sitting for 45 minutes. Let's uh, spray the surface up. Hold your fingers. Turn it out onto the work surface. And you can see this time the dough's got a lot more consistency. It's uh, softer. So very simple to stretch and fold. This time it will probably need, well it feels strong already so I'm not going to go any more than two times round. And possibly the next stretch and fold you do you might not even be able to get round um, twice, just once will be enough. Handy little tool just for cleaning off the moisture and then just stroking the bed to give it a little bit of attention. Again, you saw I turned the dough upside down, so this is the upper side. Back in the bowl. 45 minutes. Okay, well we're ready for the um, third stretch and fold. Um, for this one I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do something called lamination. It really is an optional step um, but it's really good to uh, if you want to add seeds to it at this stage. So let's have a go with the lamination. What you're going to do with the lamination is stretch the dough as thinly as you can across as wide an area as you can. So you need to wet up a little bit more of the surface. Take it out. And now just stretch him or her. You need to be slow and not do it quickly because if you do it quickly it will just rip the dough. And what you can see now is one of the classic tests for seeing if sourdough is ready is this window pane test and you can see how thin the dough is getting which is called a window pane. Now while I was waiting for it, oh just tore a little bit there, where while I was waiting for it to um, prove in the basket, I got a few sesame seeds and toasted them. What I'm going to do now is, while this is all stretched out, sprinkle the sesame seeds on it. which add a lot of flavour. I just use old spice jars to keep them in. You can easily put mixed seeds, pumpkin seeds, I put fig in, figs are really beautiful at this stage, and pumpkin seeds, or you can buy uh, mixes of seeds from Shipton Mill. There we go. Now to fold it back up again, just lift one of the corners, or one of the sides, and fold it back onto itself.
then back over to the other side and round it back up into a ball again trying to put a bit of surface tension onto this skin at the top. And I lift it back in the bowl for another 45 minutes. After this 45 minutes we're going to do one more stretch and fold, leave it on the bench for about 10 minutes and then put it in its proving basket. See you in a minute. Hi, so we've had three stretch and folds, or a lamination as uh, I, I put in on this one as well, and now it's ready to go into the proofing basket overnight. So we tip it out, this time just a really light spraying of water. Because what we want to do is put quite a lot of tension into it. Okay, so you can see now it's a lot puffier. Um, what we don't want to do is knock the air bubbles off it, so we need to touch it quite lightly. Just a little bit of water on your fingers. And fold it in on itself. Go, try and go around, if you can, if you can go around two times. Okay, now gently flip it over. And one of the reasons why you don't want a lot of water is you're going to want to put some surface tension in it again. So just, I'm going to put a little bit of water on my hand so it slides. Literally just round the back, cup your hands and drag it forward. You'll see the skin become tight across the top. That's what you're looking for. If the surface is too wet, just scrape away the, the moisture. There we go, that's beautiful. Um, now leave it on the bench for five minutes, you don't need to cover it, and go and get the proving basket ready. So you take your proving basket and you flour it. Be Use a liberal amount of flour. I use a mixture of rice flour and ordinary white flour. Make sure you get it into all the cracks. You can smooth it round with your finger if, if you can't get in all of them. Because the last thing you want is your bread sticking. Don't bang it down on the bench, or the flour will fall off it. Uh, now I'm going to add a bit more surface tension to this again, just one more time. A bit of flour on the surface, on the top. Now this is the top of the bread, remember, so what we want to do is take this and reverse it into the proving basket. Here we go. Now, that's ready to have a, a lid put over it and leave it overnight. Bake day, here we go. So, last night, um, just before I went to bed, I put the... Um, basket in the fridge. Um, it's been in all morning and it's uh, ready to bake. As you can see it's risen about 50%. Uh, you could leave it out a bit longer if you wanted uh, but this is this is ideal. So first thing we do is turn the loaf out onto a piece of baking paper. So let's turn the bread out, straight out onto the baking tray, clean off the excess flour, a bit of flour doesn't hurt but it's nice not to have great big chunks of it. 
And now this is the most important thing, is scoring the loaf. There are lots of ways of doing it. I prefer a cruciform and I've got a razor blade to do it. What I've done is I've slightly oiled it so it's going to cut in a bit easier. Now these are deep cuts, don't be afraid of going deep. The deeper you go, the more the loaf will expand while it, during its early stages. Right, now it's ready to go in, so let's get the Dutch oven out of the oven. The oven's heated at uh, 260. And simply I'm going to scoop it up in its baking paper. Put it in the Dutch oven, hoping that you've still got that in the video. And place it back in the oven. So as you can hear the buzzer has gone off which is the exciting bit. Um, normally I would just take the top off the um, pot but so we can see how the uh, loaves progress let's uh, whip it out and put it on this. As soon as you take the pot out please remember to turn the oven down to 200 or you're going to burn the loaf. And as you will shortly see, as long as I don't burn my fingers, the loaf has exploded into life. And now I'm going to put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes at 200 degrees. Okay, while you're waiting for the uh, final 20 minutes on the bread, uh, make sure you give your uh, banneton a quick scrub out uh, while the flour is still wet because you don't want it baking on the side. Uh, just use a scrubbing brush, clean it out and leave it on the side to Okay, to we're dry. ready to go. Let's get it out of the oven and see what we've got. Looks a beautiful loaf just starting to colour up. It may need a couple more minutes yet. Oops, off the thing. I'm going to tip it on its side. Not quite ready yet. I'm going to put it in for another five minutes. You get a rough idea. Um, you get a rough idea whether the loaf's ready when you uh, take it out of the oven. If you open the door and get a rush of steam in the face, uh, then you'll know that it needs a few more minutes. Perfect. Just right. Uh, take it out of the oven and onto a cooling rack. And it's best to leave it for a good hour before you tack it, to tackle it, maybe two hours. Uh, if you start cutting in it now, you'll lose some of the steam and it may collapse a little bit. So please, please just leave it a little bit. Now on the internet there are lots and lots of different recipes, lots of different methods for making sourdough. It really doesn't matter which one you use, what matters is you have one that you know works and this one has never failed me. And when you want to start playing around with different recipes, take it from here and then add more water, change the flour content, perhaps cooking times, um, different ways of kneading and then at least you can always go back to one you know will work for you. You don't have to put it on a, in, a, in a Dutch oven, you can just put it on a pizza dish, 
it's always best to have something over the top of it to, to get it going so you can get this incredible rise and keep the, the, the crust soft. That's it. Hope you have fun. I'm signing out. Cheers. Just amazing smell.